Pockets. So if you clicked on this video, I'm assuming you either like Hot Pockets or you don't know what a Hot Pocket is, in which case I feel sorry that you were deprived of them in your childhood. But as you can see, they come in a box, two to a package, they come in all different kind of flavors, and they kind of look like a solid frozen brick. So all you have to do is unwrap this bad boy and it comes with its own little pocket sleeve home cardboard thing, if you will. Personally, I like to play with it. I like to smell it. I, I don't know what it is, but sneak your little hot pocket into the sleeve and there you go. Fits like a glove and it felt nice. There it is. This bad boy is ready for the microwave. Or of course you could throw it in the oven, but that would take a really long time, says the guy who's making homemade hot pockets. But after two and a half minutes, our hot pocket is ready. The cardboard container smells even better. And yeah, here's a hot pocket. It's soft, but also kind of crisp on the outside. That's what it looks like up close. You could probably eat about six of these things, but this one smells good, so let's cut into it. And as you can see, it's chock full of sauce, cheese, and pepperoni. It's steaming hot in the middle, so be careful, but there's a nice close-up look. I mean, looks good to me. Crusty on the outside, but again, soft and chewy in the middle. And it's a really nice bite. I like to play with them, make them dance, make them fight, make them kiss. Kind of a pre-bite ritual that I used to have, so let's not break the tradition. One more close-up look, and let's have a bite. And yeah, it's been a really long time since I've had a Hot Pocket, but it tastes like a Hot Pocket. Considering it only took two and a half minutes for my own little personal pizza pocket, I really can't complain. It's saucy, it's cheesy, it's pepperoni-y. The bread is pretty good considering it came out of a microwave. And now that I've inhaled this one, let's sniff the box one more time, play around with it a little bit, and let's get to work seeing what we can do ourselves making our very own homemade Hot Pockets. And every good Hot Pocket needs a good dough, so I'm going with the classic pizza dough starting with two cups of warm water. You're gonna want it to be warm for your yeast. This is three quarters of a teaspoon of yeast. And now I'm adding just a pinch of sugar. It's actually a quarter teaspoon of sugar. Not necessary for your pizza dough, but I like a little bit of sugar in my pizza dough. And it already starts to smell like fresh bread, which I absolutely love that smell. And it'll look something like this. Let that sit for about 10 minutes before we add anything else to it just to get it working. Now I'm adding in a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. And here I have two cups of bread flour. You don't want to add it all at a time. So I'm just starting with a cup and reserving the other cup for later. You can use a spatula, you can use a whisk. I like using my hand just to get right in there and mixing up the dough. And after a minute or two, it'll start to look something like that. Now we can add in our other cup of flour to which I've also added a teaspoon of salt. You don't want to put the salt in too early because it might mess with the yeast and not help it rise. So I like to put the salt in with the last cup of flour and then keep mixing. And you'll notice here, I mean, it'll really start forming together. Your bowl should be clean when you scrape it onto your table and then start working here like a dough. I need it for about 10 minutes, but you can see once you feel it, it'll be telling you in your hands if it's ready or how much more time it needs. Just keep rolling around. It'll pick up everything on the table. And again, I say about 10 minutes, it'll form a nice pizza ball that we're going to then proof and that's kind of what we're looking for spank it squeeze it smack it do whatever you want to it as long as you feel comfortable with it you can do the window pane test where you rip off a little piece and it looks like a window but get yourself a nice clean bowl put some olive oil in it and we're gonna put our pizza dough in here we put the olive oil so it doesn't stick because when it proofs it's going to about double in size so we want to make sure that it doesn't stick to the bowl so just sneak it in there and get it comfortable and it should look something like this now grab a clean towel to cover the bowl with, and we're gonna let this proof for about two hours. You should see it double in size. And again, I wouldn't go too much shorter than two hours, and boom, you see what it looks like after that. I mean, it's awesome. It's this big spongy giant ball, and it really makes a huge difference. Definitely don't wanna skip this proofing step. And now our dough should slide right out of the bowl with little resistance because we oiled it. Now I'm gonna go with four different uh, personal pizza size dough balls. I'm using my bench scraper to cut it. If you want to make one giant pizza, you don't have to cut it all. If you want to make two large pizzas, cut it once. But again, I'm going for little hot pockets, so I'm going to make four individual size uh, pizza doughs. Now, normally I would roll it into a circle because pizza is circular, so I would roll this into like a hockey puck kind of shape before I let it proof again. But we're making hot pockets, and hot pockets are not circular. They're kind of this weird rectangular oval kind of shape. So I'm kind of forming my dough into that shape to kind of make it easier later on. Not really necessary, a circle would work just fine as you'll see later, but I've never made fresh Hot Pockets before and I've never shaped my dough into rectangles, so I wanted to give it a try and it made it a little bit easier, but not necessary. You can see how I'm doing it here. 
Now grab yourself a clean bin, spray some olive oil on the bottom so it doesn't stick. The really important thing here is you want to make sure that it's airtight to leave it in the fridge overnight and also that they're not touching each other. First I wanted to fit them all in here but they wouldn't so I got one more container. Again lock them on airtight, leave them in the fridge overnight. If you can't do it overnight I would definitely let it go for at least a few hours but I like to do it overnight for the best results. And we can't make pepperoni pizza hot pocket without pizza sauce. So I'm starting with some olive oil in a pan with some diced onions, salt, pepper to season. Now I'm throwing in about a tablespoon of garlic and I'm making about two cups of sauce to which I'm adding some dried Italian herbs. Fresh would definitely be better, probably just basil, maybe oregano, but I don't have any fresh on hand. and I have plenty of dried and two cups of pureed tomato sauce. I mean, let it simmer as long as you have. You can leave it on for hours. The longer you leave it, the better it's going to get. But I would definitely go at least a half hour to an hour. Now we have some fresh mozzarella here in a block and this tiny, tiny grater. If you have a normal size one, definitely use it. And definitely get your cheese as cold as you can before grating it. Even if you throw it in the freezer for a couple minutes, it'll just make it a lot easier. This one got a little soft, but you can see we got through it eventually. Now grab yourself a rolling pin and dust your surface with flour generously and the pin itself so the dough doesn't stick. And we're going to put the dough on there and I like to start getting the air out of it just by my fingers and moving it around. And then I'll bring in the big guns with the rolling pin, rotate it, flip it. If it's sticking, just throw some more flour on there, but you can see working it in multiple directions, it kind of comes out to this nice ovaly kind of shape so it really didn't matter what shape you put it in to proof it but it made it a little bit easier now i grab my pizza cutter just to get rid of those edges you don't have to do this if you want to make a big old rustic um, calzone hot pocket anything whatever you want to call it you don't have to do this step but since i'm trying to make it look as much like a hot pocket as possible i'm cutting it into kind of rectangular shapes two even rectangles and there we go now I'm going to put the mozzarella nice in the middle in a nice thin line. You don't want it too close to the edges because then it'll be hard to seal and it'll come out of the sides. So just put it in the middle and, and you'll get the hang of it as you go forward. Now I'm adding some sauce and I've made hundreds of calzones in my life and I've never put the sauce inside of it. I always put it on the outside to dip it in. But for some reason in Hot Pocket Land I thought the same rules wouldn't apply. And you'll see, I probably should have used half the sauce that I did, which I'll show you in a second. Here, I'm laying around some pepperoni. I use turkey pepperoni, but feel free to use whatever you have. Another layer of mozzarella cheese, and here's more sauce, which I definitely would skip if I had to do this again. But another layer of pepperoni. And our last bit of cheese on top of the mozzarella. I also have a little bit of Parmesan that I'm going to sprinkle over top because it goes nicely with our pizza theme. And now I'm going to beat an egg for an egg wash. This part isn't 100% necessary, but it just helps seal the edges a little bit. So just do it right around your toppings, right where you're going to create that seam between the top and bottom dough. Put it over top here, and you just want to stretch it over. You'll get a feel for it to where you just really kind of stretch it so you can make a nice seam on the edges. In a second here, I'm going to cut the excess. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And you can see some of the sauce got a little saucy on the side. So if you have a paper towel or a kitchen towel, just wipe away some of the excess. It'll come out of the sides. Don't panic. Not a big deal. But I'm cutting away that excess just to make it look nice and uniform. And now here, I'm going to crimp the edges all the way around just to make it nice and tight. You don't want to make it too tight, but if you don't seal it nicely, then everything's going to kind of come flying out. Uh, important step here, you definitely want to create a little air hole, so I'm just poking an air hole on either end. You could do a nice slit on top if you want, but Hot Pockets don't have that, so I just put a little air hole on either end. If you don't do that, it may explode in your oven, and you may be cursing me out as you're cleaning it, so please don't do that. Now I throw it into a parchment paper, and you could bake it just like this, but I have a pizza stone, which you see here. I got this one for 10 bucks. It's awesome. I use it for everything. It makes everything taste better. Blast the oven at about 400 degrees, and I'm going to put this guy in there for about 10 to 15 minutes, and when it comes out, it looks something like this. Again, you can see it got a little saucy on the side, if you will, so I would definitely want to go on with half the sauce, but it didn't hurt the flavor. And since it was a garlicky, buttery crust for the Hot Pocket that we bought, I made my own little garlic butter with olive oil, herbs, and garlic, and just let it steep for about 20 minutes on the stove on very low. And there you can see, it's not really puffy, but this thing really packs a lot of flavor. The layers of sauce, cheese, and pepperoni is absolutely delicious together. 
And yeah, there's not a lot in there, but it really packs a punch and I was really happy with the way that this thing came out. Again, half the sauce probably would have been better. It didn't get quite soggy, but it just was a little bit too saucy for this fella. But try it for yourself and see what you think. And yeah, that's the inside of my Hot Pocket. Came out really nice, tasted delicious, and I was pretty happy with that. But this actually inspired me to say, well, what other kind of flavor Hot Pockets could we make? I could keep it classic with a ham and cheddar, or meatball, or chicken and broccoli, but actually I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. So I'm gonna saute some onions and some garlic, seasoned with salt and pepper, and the main ingredient, spinach. This is just some frozen spinach that I drained really, really well, and I kind of squeeze out to get any excess moisture in there. And I grabbed what was left over in my fridge. I always have some roasted chicken breast that I just literally shredded with a fork while it was still hot. And so that will be really good in here. I think the chicken, spinach, and onion flavor is going to be really nice if it's complemented by the right cheese. Speaking of which, I went with a nice pepper jack. It's creamy, but it's got a nice little kick, so it should go well with those ingredients. And because my forearms are still sore from that little grater, because I haven't used my forearms that much since I was a teenager, this time I'm just going to make some nice slices. And again, we're gonna grab our dough and plenty of flour for the surface and the rolling pin itself. Use your fingers to kind of get the air bubbles out and then roll it with a rolling pin. Again, using a pizza slicer to cut off the excess to give it that nice shape. Then I'm gonna cut it right down the middle to make two perfect little rectangles. Grab our chicken and spinach mixture keep it in the middle away from the edges so you can make a nice crease and now we're going to layer our cheese one by one and then we're going to do another layer of the chicken and spinach and then one more layer of cheese now this just goes to show you you can literally use whatever ingredients you have on hand whichever ingredients you like make it your own have fun with it it's cool to kind of stick to the classics but it's even better to kind of personalize it and make it your own Again, I'm doing the egg wash to help it stick together here. You could even egg wash on the outside. It'll give it a nice golden brown crust so you don't have to waste any excess egg, but completely up to you. Crease the edges, and again, don't forget that air hole. Really important to let that steam out so you're not having a giant explosion all over the place. But this bad boy is ready for the oven as soon as we get rid of those excess edges. Poke the holes, crimp it. And yeah, now that you got the hang of it, I encourage you to try to make your own Hot Pocket. And this one's already looking better without the sauce going everywhere. Fresh out of the oven, 400 degrees on the pizza stone for about 10 minutes. And this time I just did an oil spray over top. It gives it a nice golden brown crust and makes it taste even better. And you can see, I mean, if it was a contest, aesthetically this one already looks way better because that sauce isn't exploding all over the sides. This one looks like a perfect Hot Pocket. It's big, it's crunchy, it's soft. I mean, just look at it. It would get first prize at the fair. I like it, but it's about taste. So let's cut this bad boy open. And you can see it's super hot. The steam is flowing out of it. And this thing is packed to the brim. Unlike our pepperoni pizza one, there's just a lot more going on in this one. So it kind of held the shape better. And it tastes absolutely delicious. The pepper jack is that nice little kick. The chicken, the spinach, the onions, a really good combo. And you can see here they are. We got our pepperoni pizza on the right and our spinach, chicken, and pepper jack on the left. Both really good. One's a little bit puffier, one's a little bit flatter, but both have a ton of flavor. And I'm curious to see what flavors you guys would think to make or what you would want to make. And if I had to choose which one is better, I guess there's really only one way to decide. Naturally, it would be to let them battle it out themselves. I'm the Pepper Jack Snack Attack, and I'm coming for you. Oh yeah, I'm the Pepperoni Pulverizer, brother. What can I say? They're both delicious, but in the end, there can only be one winner. And the winner is... Well, it looks like in this situation, there's only one winner. And it's the man with the full belly. Hot packets. <laughs>